Welcome and welcome back fellow fans of Clash of Clans. It is your host Galadon and today we've got 300 IQ plays in Clash of Clans. Now let me clarify this because the title is a little bit sensationalized. I will admit what I'm looking at today are great amazing plays from some of the best players in the world in Tribe Gaming. But these are plays within attacks that we could as quote unquote average clashers recreate these are strategies that we could use so yes i call them 300 iq plays but it doesn't mean that it excludes the average player from picking up on these things and using them in their own attacks now i'm not talking about the entire attack either of course these attacks are amazingly executed they don't always go to plan but they will always result in three stars today against nearly maxed out town hall 12 bases some war, some not so much war, like this more of an anti two star base, which is great because these are the type of bases we might be seeing in Legend League after Operation Blue Skies drops. But we're gonna watch Renee right here using this great funnel with the Archer Queen on the right hand side, the E Dragon and the King on the left. Mass Witch is coming in right down the middle to get to this base that makes it tough to get to the core. Now, what we're going to watch for here is the use of the stone slammer so again i'm not talking about replicating the entire attack i'm talking about maybe there's just one strategy that a player uses that is brilliant that works out really really well and perhaps we can incorporate that individual move into our own war attacks or trophy pushing attacks so yes renee's attack is going really well the funnel was flawless and now he's in the core with a bunch of his units you see the rage spell there the problem being, there's a lot of walls here to get through to get to the rest of this base. The Archer Queen can reach over and shoot a few things, but let's watch. On the right-hand side, you will see the Siege Machine is going to come in momentarily, and watch what happens when the Siege Machine, it was just switched to the Stone Slammer. Here it comes after the Archer Tower. The Archer Tower is going to move in, and watch what happens right here as it comes in after this cannon. That's right, that is an exit strategy. So it is going to take a wall down. Now there already, of course, was a tile broken by the witches on the far right. But you'll notice what the Stone Slammer did was create an opening for all of the units to come out and head out through the rest of this base. So the witches, the skeletons, the Archer Queen with her healers and the Warden, everybody is just annihilating, not to mention the number of defenses, the sheer damage that this Stone Slammer inflicts, and then, come on, Hog Riders? That's right, Hog Riders in the Stone Slammer are going to finish off the last of the defenses, targeting defenses first, and this was not a Hog Rider attack, the witches, the archers, everybody else is targeting the quote unquote trash buildings. The hogs got the defenses and yes, Renee picks up a beautiful three star in CWL. So we called that first one the Bacon Basher. That's right, the hog riders in the stone slammer. And right here, we've got the Peking Special. Peking Special, you'll see in just a moment. Let's watch Flossie as he starts out his funnel against this base again in CWL. And this time we've got Miners. Now, normally, what you'll see players do is they'll funnel one side of the base, one corner of the base, with that queen walk slash queen charge. And then, the other side usually gets funneled by a barbarian king. He gets down there, and he's going to kind of go down the side of the base, watch for that 6 o'clock area, moving to the left towards 9 o'clock. What that's going to do is create a funnel for those miners to move in, and they'll keep that narrow pathway right at the town hall, to grab that safe second star. But what we're going to see here is the Peking handoff. And yes, this is not something I've ever heard of. I actually just made that name up like uh, 60 seconds ago. But well, you'll see at the bottom of the screen where you would normally expect to see the king, Flossie is going to use a P.E.K.K.A. And now this becomes a 300 IQ play a little bit later in the replay as we watch the Archer Queen move in. And sure enough, getting massive value. Now there it is. The miners move in a minute 30 left, which is really short on time, right? Remember, miners usually need about a minute 45. The P.E.K.K.A. is doing exactly what the Barbarian King normally does. The P.E.K.K.A., notice she is distracting the fire from the Wizard Tower, from the Archer Tower, and she's clearing those outside buildings. That's enabling the miners to stay focused and stay after the Town Hall. What happens here is, there it is. There is the peaking handoff on the left-hand side of your screen. 
the P.E.K.K.A. is going to go down and the King, get it? P. King, P.E.K.K.A. King. The P.E.K.K.A.'s job is done. She hands the task of funneling off to the Barbarian King just about flawlessly. Right here, the Barb King comes in and what he does is again, keeps the miners focused on the interior of this base, lets them make that 90 degree turn as they hit the town hall, now they move to the right, and instead of moving towards the outside of this base, hitting in those outer buildings, they're gonna go in, they're gonna get the cannon, the wizard tower, the sweeper, and of course, the multi-target inferno. The king, who if he had been dropped at six o'clock, would have been dead by nine o'clock, now is going to go all the way to 12 o'clock, and yes, he is now reunited with his bride, with his queen. They are together again, and also it kind of becomes an overkill three-star here for Flossie. So two things happened. Not only did the king keep more miners up, more miners focused, but also saved a massive amount of time in what otherwise could have been a time fail is instead an overwhelming three-star with the Peking handoff. All right, next up, we've got Muffin from Drive Gaming, and this one I just like to call what walls? As you'll notice that the Archer Queen is going to be deployed way down at the bottom of your screen over around 8 o'clock, yet her destination is the Town Hall. There's like one, two, three, four, five layers of walls between her and that Town Hall, but watch Muffin with the 300 IQ moves getting that Archer Queen to go focused right at that Town Hall. And again, this is a Lalo attack. Remember, Lalo can be very risky because it can sometimes be difficult to get the town hall down because, of course, balloons won't target it until you're past 50%. Yes, yeah, so you want to, if you can with these Lalo attacks, try to use your heroes to take down a town hall. And you would think that means starting the heroes over near the town hall, which is actually not protected by any walls. But check out this jump spell right here as the king is going to funnel beautifully the jump spell keeps the Archer Queen headed towards the Town Hall. Now, a lot of players might think, oh, I want to drop this jump spell to the left of where you see it here to get the Archer Queen after the Eagle Artillery. But no, the Eagle is not going to be that big of an issue because, again, this is a Lalo attack. Watch the Archer Queen moving her way towards the Town Hall. The Barb King, his job is done. He's out of here. He has completed a beautiful flawless funnel as the archer queen moves in you'll notice the lalo portion begins the archer queen sure enough is going to close in of course on her way she wiped out an air defense or two i believe there's two air defenses down now but yes she gets the job done she moves in towards that town hall enclosure wiping out everything in her path and finally getting to the town hall the beautiful timing from muffin here allows the lalo portion to come in and do the cleanup while the archer queen is grabbing the town hall the Eagle Artillery is out of the way. The Warden ability is used right there. And now, yes, you're about to watch another Overkill 3-star. So a beautiful use of Wall Breakers and then a slightly unusual or unexpected Jump Spell placement. The Archer Queen does her job. The Lava Hounds and Balloons do theirs. And once again, no question, this village is going to be completely demolished. And the Archer Queen doesn't even need her ability. You've got swag all over the place. There's a spare balloon. There's like a dozen balloons still up. Plenty of time. Look at all of the cleanup units, the lava pups and the minions moving in from the left side of your screen. And uh, yes, well done by Muffin. Another beautiful 300 IQ play. But wait, we're not done, and neither is Muffin. That's right, back-to-back, -back, 300 IQ plays. We've got Muffin in it again, CWL, same season, and this time, special delivery. That's simple, right? Special delivery, but wait until you see the use of the blimp. Now, of course, you don't see battle blimps being used that much, and almost always when you see them at Town Hall 12 recently, we're seeing electron attacks. This is going to be an unusual deployment of the Battle Blimp and definitely something that any of us can use in this specific situation when you've got a target that you need to get out of the way. So again, great start to this attack, great use of Wall Breakers, which I'm telling you right there, that takes nerves of steel. To drop in Wall Breakers, no Freeze spell around, no Rage spell, they get in, they get the job done, and the early hero entry, this is that hero charge, hero dive, no healers. Their job is to get in, wipe out that town hall, and start to create a funnel. Now, there are multiple 300 IQ moves in a lot of these attacks. Watch right here as the Archer Queen's ability has already been used. 
What is not a concern at this point in this Lalo attack is the Lava Hound. So the Lava Hound basically becomes useless at this point. It's just going to sit there. He's actually going to draw it out to the edge of the screen using a lone archer right there. And now the Lava Hound alone, forever alone, as the rest of this attack continues. But the 300 IQ move that gets us the special delivery is just about to come. And that is, you know, if you're a Lalo attacker, the Archer Queen, the defending Archer Queen is absolutely a bane to this type of attack. Watch the blimp moving in with a special delivery of double dragon. That's right, two dragons dropping in and they vaporize the Archer Queen. She is gone, she is out, she is asleep. She is KO'd and the rest of this attack can move on. So not something you see every day. Two dragons special delivery in the battle blimp move in with the only real target being the Archer Queen. Now it turns out that those dragons are crucial to finishing this attack. It is not as much of an overkill three star as you might think. And in fact, because of the multi-target Inferno in the core of this base, this would actually not have been a three star if it weren't for the double dragons. Watch as they wrap around the left side of this base and then eventually move in. Now, Muffin, I would say this poison is not a swag. This is actually a frustration poison because I think that Muffin suspected that this would not be a three star. So the poison goes down just kind of like, oh my gosh, please, no, don't let this happen. They're stuck on the clan castle the poison is there the dragon is getting burned slowly but surely and now finally it turns out the tesla already damaged gets finished off and muffin picks up the beautiful three star with the 300 iq special delivery next up we've got marco 187 from tribe gaming with what i like to call jump for joy okay so this will be the 300 iq jump spell as we watch this attack unfold, yes, you've got bowlers, you've got P.E.K.K.A.s, it's P.E.K.K.A. Smash, and a pretty unusual base layout right here. Watch this beautiful funnel. So the Town Hall kind of sticking out like a sore thumb with a single target Inferno. So now the Archer Queen and the Barb King are very carefully going to funnel around it to carve out this area so that everybody else can move in down the middle. Obviously, Marco does not want that single target Inferno to lock onto the king or the queen. Part of the reason that that ice golem is moving in. There you can see the king used the ability already, so the barbs are going to soak up any beams that come out from that single target Inferno. The archer queen has pretty much completed the right-hand side funnel, despite the fact that she ran into a Tesla farm. So here comes your P.E.K.K.A. smash right down the middle with a wall wrecker going to get through those two outside walls. Everybody after that town hall. But watch again for the jump spell as everybody moves in. The jump spell right there. Now, why is that jump spell 300 IQ? Because Marco shifted the jump spell further to the right just far enough that not only does it get his P.E.K.K.A. Smash army into the middle, watch the Archer Queen use it. That's right. He put it right at that four-way juncture. And yes, the Archer Queen uses the jump spell. So almost like two jump spells right there. He got the P.E.K.K.A. Smash army into the core. He got the Archer Queen to move back in, and she got massive value walking, semi-charging into this base, getting those defenses that otherwise would have been A, firing on the P.E.K.K.A. Smash portion, and B, left behind around the outside of this base. The Archer Queen, now she is going to go down eventually, but look at her go up there. At the bottom of the screen, the P.E.K.K.A.s, the Bowlers, the Healers, everybody doing a great job. The Lava Hound desperately trying to stop this, but there's no way that he can do anything but watch his village get annihilated as an absolutely beautifully placed jump spell served a second purpose for Marco. So sometimes adjusting the placement of a spell can affect other units. You have to be able to adjust on the fly. Marco saw that in the middle of the attack and was able by just half of a square to get that Archer Queen in the jump spell. And that comes from not only just amazing planning the ability to think on your feet, but also, of course, the knowledge of the radius of your spells. Okay, last but certainly not least is one of my favorite players from Tribe Gaming, none other than Boom. And the nickname I've given this attack, Healers Hug Hog Riders, and you'll see pretty early on in the attack. So what we're going to see here is a careful deployment of the healers. Notice that the Barb King, 
He would be healed by those healers if Boom weren't careful to place them off to the left and wait for the Barb King to get out of the way. Now you can see that the path the Archer Queen is going to take is going to put her healers in grave danger. Once the Town Hall goes down, she moves her way in. The Wall Breakers open up the wall, but you can see right there, multi-target Inferno and of course the air defense. So she's dealing with the clan castle troops right now. Healers out of the range of the multi-target Inferno. You can see the Archer Queen is lying in wait as well. And as she moves in, we're actually going to freeze the frame this time because it's easy to miss. And actually the first time I watched this, I missed what Boom did right here. And yes, 300 IQ Hog Riders. So the Archer Queen with the Rage spell is gonna wipe out these defenses and she's going to take that Inferno Tower out of the way. But look at the air defense. Do you see the air defense right there? As the Archer Queen moves in just another step or two, that air defense is going to activate and start to wipe out her healers one by one. But no, no chance because he's dropped heroic hog riders to come in and specifically target that air defense. That and the freeze spell allows those hog riders to get in there, wipe out the air defense, and now this attack can continue. The queen charge continues unhindered as there's nobody to bother those healers. They will definitely be hugging those hog riders later. Well, even though the hog riders are turned into a licks. They would hug them if they could, all right? They definitely would hug them if they could. They're very thankful for what just happened. And it certainly was a turning point in this attack. Remember, in these Queen Charge style attacks, the value from that Queen Charge makes all the difference. Look at her go in now and take out multiple defenses, Expos, Archer Towers, Wizard Towers, all sorts of things, especially the Wizard Towers that would otherwise stop the balloons from getting the rest of this base down. Even that multi-target Inferno, an absolute beautiful job from the Archer Queen. And all of that, all of those buildings are thanks to those four hog riders that came in and wiped out the air defense early. So again, detailed planning, considering every single defense and every single unit in an attack can make a difference. This is why Tribe Gaming is considered, without a doubt, one of the very best elite war clans in the world. And of course, they are now a professional esports team and five of their members are headed to compete for $1 million at the end of this year in the Clash of Clans World Championships. And that is going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The 300 IQ moves that all of us can use, that all of us can employ to get better at attacking in Clash of Clans. Let me know if you guys have other ideas for episodes. Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check me out live streaming on Facebook Gaming. Comment, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Most importantly, have a fantastic best of the rest of your day. Get out there, be kind to people, animals, and the planet. And I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. players are invited to join my clan. I approve this message.